The first and second derivatives of a function can tell us a lot about the shape of the graph of the function. In this video, we'll see what f prime and f double prime can tell us about where the function is increasing and decreasing, has local max and mins, is concave up and concave down, and has inflection points. We'll start by defining a few of these terms. Recall that a function is increasing. If f of x1 is less than f of x2, whenever x1 is less than x2. In other words, the graph of the function is going up as we move from left to right. The function is decreasing. If f of x1 is greater than f of x2, whenever x1 is less than x2. In other words, the graph of the function is going down as we move from left to right. Recall that f of x has a local maximum at x equals c. If f of c is greater than or equal to f of x, for all x in an open interval around c. And f of x has a local minimum at x equals c means that f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in an open interval around c. We say that a function is concave up on an interval from a to b if informally it looks like a bowl that could hold water on that interval. More formally, a function is concave up if all the tangent lines for the function on that interval lie below the graph of the function. The function is concave down on the interval from a to b. This means informally that the graph of the function looks like a bowl that would spill water. Or more formally, it's concave down if the tangent lines for the function on that interval all lie above the graph of the function. f of x has an inflection point at x equals c if it changes concavity at c. In other words, it goes from concave up to concave down, or from concave down to concave up. In this graph, the function has two inflection points, one about here, where the function changes from concave down to concave up, and one at the cusp right here, where it changes from concave up to concave down. Please pause the video for a moment and find all of these features for the graph of f shown here. Please express your answers as x values. It's tricky to say what's happening to the function when x is near 2. Is it exactly horizontal or is it slightly increasing? Well, if we assume it's slightly increasing, then f is increasing for x values between 0 and 6, and then again for x values between 10 and 11. It's not important here whether we use open or closed brackets on our intervals. f is decreasing when the x values are between 6 and 10, and again for x values between 11 and 12. f has a local maximum here at the point 6, 6, and again at the point 11, 2.8. So that's at x values 6, and 11. And x has a local minimum here at the point 10, about 2.1. So that's at an x value of 10. Recall that the endpoints here don't count as local minimums because the function's not even defined in an open interval around those x values. f is concave up around here, and again, around here. So that would be for x values between 2 and 4 and between about 8 and 11. And f is concave down everywhere else from x values from about 0 to 2 and from about 4 to 8 and finally from x values from 11 to 12. Finally, f has inflection points where it switches concavity. So here at x equals 2, it switches from concave down to concave up. 
here at x equals 4, it switches from concave up to concave down. And here at x equals 8, it switches from concave down to concave up. And finally, at x equals 11, it switches from concave up to concave down. So all in all, there were four inflection points for this function at x values of 2, 4, 8, and 11. Now that we've located the features of the graph, let's see what those features have to do with the first and second derivatives. In this example, everywhere that f is increasing, its derivative is positive or possibly equal to 0 at that one point. So we can say that increasing implies f prime of c is greater than or equal to 0. Although it doesn't happen in this example, it could happen that we had an increasing function where f prime of c does not exist. In this example, everywhere that f is decreasing, we have a negative slope. Although it doesn't happen in this example, it could also happen that f prime was equal to 0 at a point or did not exist at a point. The increasing-decreasing test turns this observation around and allows us to predict if the function is increasing just by looking at the derivative. Specifically, it says that if f prime of x is greater than 0 on an interval, then f is increasing on this interval. And if f prime of x is less than 0 on the interval, then f is decreasing on this interval. Next, let's talk about concavity. Here, where the function is concave up, its derivative is going from very close to 0 to larger and larger positive numbers. So the derivative is increasing. In this part, which is also concave up, the derivative starts out negative, but gets closer and closer to 0. So it's also increasing. And as we continue, it goes from 0 to positive, so it continues to increase. So in this example, on the intervals where f is concave up, its first derivative is increasing. Another way to say this is that the second derivative is positive, since the second derivative measures the rate of change of the first derivative. To be more precise, all that we can conclude for sure is that the second derivative is greater than or equal to 0, or does not exist because that's all that we know for sure about the derivative of an increasing function, as we saw in the previous slide. If we look at the slopes where the function is concave down, those slopes are going from positive to zero, or from positive to zero to negative. So those slopes are decreasing. Or in other words, the second derivative is negative. More precisely, we know for sure it's less than or equal to zero, or does not exist. The concavity test turns these observations around and lets us predict concavity based on the second derivative. If f double prime of x is greater than 0 for all x on an interval, then f is concave up on this interval. If f double prime is less than 0 for all x on an interval, then f is concave down on this interval. One way to remember the concavity test is that a positive second derivative gives us a happy face, and a negative second derivative gives us a sad face. Next, let's look at inflection points. Inflection points occur where the concavity changes. Here it changes from concave down to concave up. In other words, from f double prime being negative to f double prime being positive. And at that point, right there where the concavity changes, f double prime will be 0. In addition, f double prime changes sign from negative to positive in this case. At the next inflection point, we're going from concave up to concave down, f double prime is changing from positive to negative and also passes through 0. At this point, we also have f double prime is 0. And at this point, we have that f double prime doesn't exist but it's still a changing sign here, this time from positive to negative. We can turn this observation around into an inflection point test, which says that if f double prime of x 
change is sine at C, then F has an inflection point at C. It's worth noting that to guarantee an inflection point, it's not enough to just have F double prime of C equal to zero. For example, if we look at the function f of x equals x to the fourth, f prime of x is 4x cubed, and so f double prime of x is 12x squared, and f double prime at zero equals zero, but there's no inflection point. In fact, the graph of x to the fourth looks something like this, and it's concave up everywhere. Finally, let's look at local maximum points and local minimum points in terms of the first and second derivatives. We've seen before that at a local maximum point, f prime of c must equal zero or not exist. And the same thing happens at local minimum points. But you have to be careful because there are places where f prime of c is equal to zero that are not local maximums or local minimums. Please pause the video and think for a moment about what's different about f prime near this critical point, where we don't have an extreme point, and near this critical point, where we have a local maximum. Notice that near the first critical point, the derivative is positive on the left and positive on the right of the critical point, whereas for the local maximum, we have a derivative that's positive on the left and negative on the right. In fact, at any local maximum, f prime will change from positive to negative at c. Similarly, at a local minimum, like this one here, f prime will change from negative slope to a positive slope. I also want to look at what's happening to the second derivative near the local maximums. Here, our function is concave down, so f double prime is going to be negative, while here, f double prime doesn't exist. At our local minimum example, we have the function is concave up, so f double prime is positive. Although it doesn't happen in this example, you can imagine a situation where f double prime doesn't exist at a local minimum also. In fact, it's actually possible that f double prime could even equal zero at a local maximum or a local minimum. For example, We've seen that f of x equals x to the fourth is an example of a function whose second derivative at zero is zero, but it has a local min at x equals zero. The observations we've made here about the first and second derivatives at local maximum and minimum points are very important and can be turned around and modified to give us criteria for deciding when we have a local maximum or a local minimum just in terms of the first and the second derivative. The first derivative test says that if f is a continuous function and c is a critical number, then we can decide if f has a local maximum or minimum at c by looking at the first derivative near c. More specifically, if we know that f prime of x is positive for x less than c and negative for x greater than c, then our function looks something like this, or maybe like this. And so we have a local max at x equals c. If, on the other hand, f prime of x is negative for x less than c and positive for x greater than c, then our function looks something like this, or maybe like this. And so we have a local min. If our f prime of x is positive on both sides of c, or negative on both sides of c, then we do not have any kind of extreme point at x equals c. Instead, our graph might look something like this, or something like this. The first derivative test is great because it helps us locate extreme points just by looking at the first derivative. The second derivative test gives us an alternative for finding local extreme points by looking at the second derivative. Specifically, the second derivative tells us that if f double prime is continuous near c, then if f prime of c is equal to zero 
and f double prime of c is greater than zero, f has a local min at c. If f prime of c is zero and f double prime of c is less than zero instead, then f has a local max. Notice that if f double prime of c is equal to zero or is undefined, then we have no information about a local extremum. F might have a local max or a local min, or it might have no extreme point at all there. In this video, we introduce the first derivative test and a second derivative test, which allow us to identify when a function has a local maximum or a local minimum.